Uh, Father, we do thank you we can be here tonight, and we thank you um, um, you give us safe journeys, Lord God, and uh, we want to open your word again, Lord God, and we want to thank you for your word. We want to thank you for the king that the word points to, Lord God, that we can have a relationship with Jesus, um, our Lord and Saviour, and we can be, uh, we're wretches wrapped in righteousness, and Lord God, we just want to be thankful for that tonight, Lord, and, and uh, raise our hearts uh, before you, before the king, but also bound before the almighty God of all creation, and um, help us to uh, really this to stick to our innermost being in our minds Lord God uh, um, and give me ability to do it in Jesus name Amen alright so we're in the book of Acts now what I'd usually do is before we do like a explore a book um, I'd probably do um, an introduction for about an hour but um, the book of Luke is the introduction <laughs> for the book of Acts that's the first book Luke wrote um, obviously Luke but also he wrote Acts and uh, I'm going to read the first chapter. I don't think we'll get through it all tonight. Uh, but I'll just read it all. I'm reading from the NIV, right? The, um, you know, a version which is not brilliant. But um, it's, it's thought for thought. This is historical narrative. And there's a little bit of Greek I'll go into. But um, if you've got anything that the um, King James, what some of you are reading, is, is, you know, majorly different, we can discuss that. I've looked at all of them. So we'll be able to just pull that out. And really get going. We don't have to finish chapter one. I'm just going to read chapter one. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. While they were looking intently in the, up in the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, he said, why do you stand there here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women, um, along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. In those days, Peter stood up amongst the believers, a group numbering about 120, and said, Brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke long ago through the mouth of David concerning Judas, who served as a guide for those who arrested Jesus. He was one of our number and shared in this ministry. With the reward he got for his wickedness, Jesus bought a field. Uh, sorry, Judas bought a field, and there he fell headlong. His body burst open, and all his intestines spilled out. Enjoy your dinner. Everyone in Jerusalem heard about this, so they called that field in their language Akeldama. That is field of blood. For said Peter, it is written in the book of Psalms: May this place be deserted; let there be no one to dwell in it and may another take his place of leadership. Therefore, it is necessary to choose one of the men who have been with us the whole time the Lord Jesus went in and out amongst us, beginning from John's baptism to the time when Jesus was taken up from us. For one of these, one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. So they proposed two men, Joseph called Barsabbas, also known as Justus, and Matthias. Then they prayed, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show, show us which one of 
these two you have chosen to take over from this apostolic ministry when Judas left to go uh, sorry when which Judas left to go w to where he belongs <laughs> then they cast lots and the lot fell to Matthias so he was added to the 11 apostles wow so that's chapter 1 of the book of acts and um well the public reading of god's word it should be done regularly and um it's a good thing so we've got the book of acts and we're looking at around about 60 ad all right now some scholars they reckon now some of your some of your commentaries what you've got there on your knee might differ slightly there's people who've got reasons for saying it's a couple of years early reasons for saying it's a couple of years later there's no problem ballpark okay jesus's death and resurrection was about 33 34 AD um, so you're looking at like how many years um, before the book of Acts was written do the math there you go so what we've got is about 30 years so but this doesn't um, uh, track 30 years it's when he it's when he wrote the book um, but it's it's also well studied and a lot of people believe that Luke when he was writing Acts has probably read Galatians 1 and 2 Thessalonians 1 and 2 Corinthians Romans and he's written Luke and now he's written Acts okay so he's written he's, he's read those letters but probably not other ones because they were written after Acts and we're going to look at evidence to show that these books were probably in his mind and especially the book of Galatians all right so let's get into the text I'm going to do it bit by bit and there's a few things to get through so I don't know how we're going to do tonight we might get through it all who knows all right so one chapter one verse one in my former book so there you go it's, it's Luke Luke is his former book Theophilus now what we've got there is something where take it or leave it but the Holy Spirit always puts things in the text which is a little bit kind of like reveal if you know what's going on if you remember the book of Ephesians when it said you have to believe these things you have to buy the this is the will of God and I labored it for weeks and weeks and weeks and then it went on about all the blessings in the unseen realm which God has bestowed on us and he's given us by the power of his uh, by the, the, the resurre resurrection of Jesus the power that's within us and it's available to us and we went for weeks and weeks talking about that but the key to it was this is God's will whether you believe it or not whether you feel like it you are predestined chosen loved by his his, his, um, his will and his but his full understanding and his full knowledge and a big smile on his face with all you know intention for good towards you he has chosen you out of this world to be uh, somebody who inherits eternal life and the thing was if that's his will and you don't feel like it you're having a bad day I know a couple of people in here who's definitely had a bad day at work I'm one of them right <laughs> and the thing is I'm like going oh gosh this has been tough today but guess what's true I'm gonna live eternally because I believe in Jesus his death and resurrection caused you know like the the, the veil to be torn in two heavens open and in 1989 I was given the opportunity to um, you know hear the gospel but it was different this time there was something going on inside there was something of a, of a move that this there was I just made sense before it was all about stained glass windows and smelly pews you know um, but now it was like whoa wait a minute there's something's making sense in my mind in my heart and um, God switched the light on and made Jesus insatiable um, it's just like you can't not get saved when that happens so you just see the uh, just a glimpse of his glory and then you know you make a decision for Christ and um, if you haven't made that decision in here, if that's something new to you that kind of thing if you've been in a church and raised your hand if you've been um, l listening to religion all your life or you've been listening forced even as a child to you know somehow be part of a context called Christianity but that's never happened to you then I'd seek after God seek Jesus he'll willingly take your hand and um, breathe life into you but one of the reasons why I wanted to labor on that slightly is because where Ephesians would talk a lot about the invisible realm and things that are almost intangible I don't wake up on tomorrow morning and it's Wednesday and is it Wednesday yeah what's it? <laughs> tomorrow morning and I think great I'm blessed and I'm um, um, I'm uh, predestined it doesn't we talked about it didn't we? it doesn't occur to us 
these are things that are really hard to get to but God we can search them out because of Jesus we can search him out and we'll find more wisdom given to us about that if, that, if that's about the spiritual and unseen realm Acts is about the practicalities and the walking out of this power the actual way that Jesus risen and glorified indwells endues which means empowers and then and then issues forth into this world through these apostles all right now I'm not claiming that this is normal <laughs> because the people here were the ones we'll find out who actually saw Jesus resurrected and apparently that makes a difference okay but I'm also not saying that miracles signs and wonders are impossible I think they're entirely possible but a lot of it's about getting as a church together in a place where we're really seeking after God and we're really praying because we'll find these are all key things baptizing the Holy Spirit seeking after him you know and he can and he has worked through us we've seen miracles haven't we we've seen people cured of uh, cancer and we've seen the um, miraculous things happen but not a lot you know and I'm a bit like an optimist I'm like if it's happened once I want it to happen a million times you know and I want to see God explode through any group <laughs> as long as it's genuine and authentic and bless this world you know so we are well placed uh, to be able to say God use me use my life with all its frailties and fractures and all the things that are not going right and it's it's hard to walk well sometimes um, God use these fishermen God use these guys who are one of the things about the Gospels that's so authentic is it ain't glorifying anyone except Jesus these men are David's exposed in the Old Testament he's not one of these apostles Peter was rebuked by each member of the Trinity separately on three separate occasions at least right and we'll find out that he's the one who gets up and preaches what's this the guy who's going around killing the church murdering Christians is the greatest missionary ever Paul Saul to Paul yeah so you're like going just a minute this this isn't business is it because it's the successful it's the it's the money rich it's the people who've got rich talents and abilities and resources mm -hmm. the world gets all of them and says off you go go and do your thing God says no it's the broken it's the weak it's the failure it's the one who's comes to me heart held low humbly and says I'm broken then God starts to fix them God fills them with his spirit and sends them and what I want you to know because you're going to feel detached from all this I feel detached from Paul I feel detached from Jesus you know not in a spiritual sense but the things he did in the way he was I feel detached from the, the, the things that are in Ephesians but listen to this in my former book Theophilus now I believe there was a person called Theophilus right or rather because they, they would have translated it for the Greek from the Greek but that's the Greek Theophilus and that's friend of God this book is addressed to you because you are a friend of God the Holy Spirit's put this name in here and it, it could have been um, if it was a car salesman friend of BMW you know it could have been but it wasn't it's friend of God his name is friend of God and what we need to do tonight is realize that things like this are placed in the scriptures for you to take comfort from the fact that this book and other books all of them uh, addressed to you beloved friend of God you are the friend of God you're a Christian somebody who knows Jesus so that's just the first kind of verse and um, I find that a blessing because I can go this is addressed to me and, and God wants you to know what's in here God wants us all to be blessed by the content so in my former book the book of Luke Theophilus friend of God I wrote about all that Jesus began to do so I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken into heaven so in the book of Luke Luke only wrote about what Jesus began to do why isn't it interesting he wrote the book of Luke it says it there I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up into heaven because he hasn't stopped so what we are about to see is the ministry of Jesus worked out through these apostles right it's going to take some weeks to do it but this is what Luke's trying to put across to us I've told you what Jesus did to start to do but what we're going to see is the mechanism 
how which he gets it into us and then outworks it. Continuing. Yeah, so does that make sense? Every one of us, every believer on earth, is supposed to be the hands and feet of God. We're supposed to be the walking, talking Jesuses. You're not Jesus, but if you know what I mean, he can work through us. Jesus only ever acted in the spiritual gifts. Someone told me that, and I'm thinking, that means I can walk and walk. No, does <laughs> There were some like messianic gifts that he did, and that you're not the Messiah, so you can't do them. But the spiritual gifts were walked out. Jesus um, emptied himself, it says in Philippians, right? And that's called the kenotic principle. He emptied himself. Theologians have got books written about how much he emptied himself. Was it, was it 1%? Was it 50%? Was it total? But the whole idea, it seems from Scripture, is that Jesus would stand on earth as a man, and he'd look at his Father in heaven and take instruction from his Father in heaven, perfectly capable of doing everything himself, and just for our benefit, and saying, here's the lesson. We look to our Father in heaven for instruction, and walk and talk exactly what he's telling us to do, led by the Holy Spirit. Does that make sense? The Spirit came upon him in his baptism, you know, and all that, that was a visual representation of what was going on, and Jesus was our example, and we're going to watch how it works out now. So, in my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken into heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he showed himself to those and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. Now, you can go off now and you can start to look at the, the times when he um, showed himself and there's accounts there and we could do that. But I think you're familiar with them. And he, he, it's, it's curious because watch what it says next. Um, he appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them. Now why, why would it say while he was eating with them, do you think? Because um, it's very unusual that someone who's dying is eating. It shows that he's got a body. And he's using the body, and he's actually pleasure, you know, pleasurable food, eating food's pleasure, pleasurable. And he's there, and, and he's got really a resurrected body. So he's, Luke's kind of saying, number one, hey, this ain't a ghost. They're not looking at spirits. They're not looking at something that's like Casper, the friendly ghost, you know. He was eating with them. So Luke's under, he's underlining stuff. It's quite genius. It's a bit of a genius, Luke. He's a doctor, Luke. He's a doctor, so, you know, he's not... You know, he's, he's studied, he's learned. Gentile as well. But he, although he's converted, he's a Gentile. So, While he was eating with them, I'm convinced as well that most times when he, when he revealed himself to the apostles, he was eating as well. And he was teaching them what to do when they meet together around him, when he's not there. Eat together. And that's why we have the cup and the bread. That's what in, in a lot of churches. That's why we do it with a meal. You know? And that's why you know, we eat together. Because Jesus is there, it's a covenant meal. So he's, he's teaching, it's didactic. He gave them this command. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. Now, where do we find the promise of the father? Where do we, where do we find the detail of this gift that's coming? Does anyone know? It's in John probably 14 on to 17 and a little bit further okay it's the um, it's the bit when he prays and shall we go there i'll have a look quick look there it's just a, it's just a few pages back let's start of um um 14 15 if you love me you will obey what i command and i will ask the father and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever the spirit of truth the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him but you know him for he lives with you and will be in you i will not leave you as orphans i will come to you before long the world will not see me anymore but you will see me because i live you also will live on that day you will realize that i am in my father and you are in me and i am in you whoever has my commands and obeys them he is the one who loves me he who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him 
to and show himself to myself to him. 25. After all this, this I have spoken still while with you, but the counsel of the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send, there's the promise, in my name will teach you all these things and will remind you of everything I've said to you. Peace I live with you, my peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. So there's part of the promise which was given there. So we're looking at John um, 14, 15 onwards and then 25. So there's a promise coming. But he's called it a gift. The gift the Father's promised. Now here's where we get a problem. Because in the in Corinthians and all that, and other uh, New Testament books, the, the gifts of the Spirit, as we know them, are called gifts of the Spirit. So we think there's several gifts, but there's actually not several gifts. There's only one gift, and that's the gift of the Spirit. Technically, there's three gifts. Number one, Jesus. Number two, the Holy Spirit. And number three, salvation. Them are three gifts that we get from God. But on this occasion, in this time space, the gift is the Holy Spirit that's going to be given. Now here's the problem. The word gift in 1 Corinthians and other places is actually the word charis, which is grace. So here's the thing. The gift of God comes to live within you through you becoming a Christian. But then the grace that comes from having that gift in you manifests as gifts what we call gifts but it's actually grace is the grace of God God's riches at Christ's expense coming out of you issuing forth into this world and we're going to see these happen spectacularly in the book of Acts and hopefully we can you know get before God and just seek after greater things seek after greater um, um, manifestation of his power in this dark world now then this is a trap sometimes in this modern world because a lot of people get used by God with a good heart but then five years later they're chasing a Rolex or a BMW right because it's, they thought it, it's about them but I want to I want to give you a thought and I've said this before but I'll say it again for this for this uh, media the guys who were involved in this the apostles wrote epistles some of them right but what you don't get in any of them is attributing any of the manifestations here to themselves in fact it's quite the opposite it's actually I'm less I'm you know let me shrink let me become less let me fall away for the sake of this ministry that Jesus has done through us and they'll report on it they'll tell you about things that happen and you know we've got some of it and especially in the Gospels you know but what we've got here is um, is power manifested through mere men who went on to not brag about it but we find different things today <laughs> we find books and books and you know material and all the the the, the um, resources that are being built and the TV ministries and all that kind of stuff and I'm not condemning all of them but I would say that there's a lot of people who God set off with a pure heart was used by God and then became a reason for their own interests you know so we've got to, the primary thing here is not the gift, it's the giver. And that's where the balance always has to be. If God, you know, ever uses you, it's about God, it's about Jesus, it's about his glory, it's about his manifestation of power through you. And um, let's move on. Um, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, we saw that, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptised with water, but in a few days you will be baptised with the Holy Spirit. Okay, so we've got, there's a few doctrines messing about. You know, have you ever wondered where Christianity gets its ideas from? It's chapters like this, it's books like this. What, bapt, what John's baptism, get baptised in water, we'll see that. The baptism of the Holy Spirit, we'll see that in the book of Acts. Um, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost has all been mentioned already. It's all... Um, in there you know so we've got this is where we get, we get our doctrine from and this is a gentile writing after the act having many seen all this this stuff and witnessed the birth of the church in um, uh, the um, you know the biblical countries and all that Macedonia and all that kind of thing and he's reporting on it 
6. So when they met together, they asked him, this is, that's Jesus, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? So in their thinking, Jesus had died, Jesus had rose again, they've seen him, and then, you know, they're kind of asking him, right, you die, you've rose again, what's the purpose of this? It must be for you to now, as prophesied in the prophets, for you to take your throne in Jerusalem and become the king of all the earth. All right? But watch how God whips him away. Watch this. I, I, I might be looking into this, but it's one of these, there's a few comedy moments in here, and I reckon this is a bit of a comedy moment. So they said, he said, to, when, when, he, when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? In other words, get the Romans out. We, the kingdom of heaven is from Israel, which it will be in the millennial reign. And he says, it's not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority. But you receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. It's almost like God saying, stop asking awkward questions. There's going to be 2,000 years I can't tell you about because you'll freak out. All right, But this church you're about to birth... All right, it's going to be a 2,000 year thing and I can't tell you that. It looks like that. I'm not, you know, I'm just putting, I'm filling in some blanks. But Israel, the, the, the apostles and the people at the time couldn't have known, they, they didn't know how long it was going to go. Paul expected Jesus' return in his lifetime. Then he didn't. He said, I've run the race, I'm going to go, you know, the Lord's going to take me. And then, you know, but they expected the return of Jesus in their lifetime. And then later on we're told why Jesus is still in heaven. Anyone knows? We have done this before. Why is Jesus took 2,000 years? He's waiting for the number. Yeah, there's a number of Gentiles to come in. Uh, anyone know where that says that? No, Romans um, Romans uh, 9 to 11. Sorry, not Romans. Yeah, it is Romans, I think. But um, it's about where Israel's there, and, and Israel gets um, saved in the last days. But there has to be a number of Gentiles that come in, and no one knows that number. Don't try it or do your heading. You were there all the time going, how do we know the ones who are saved? You don't. We don't. We've, we've been over this. All right. So after this, he said this, he was taken before their very eyes and a cloud hid him from their sight. Stop asking awkward questions. He doesn't say that in the scriptures, but I'm like, you know, let's get him, let's whip him away before this gets a little bit like. 10. They were looking intently up in the sky as he was going when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee. Now I can imagine they're all gawping into the sky like that and these guys are stood behind them looking at each other going, what? Because they, they know what's going on and they don't really know what's going on. So, two men stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand there looking into the sky? <laughs> Angels are sarcastic sometimes, aren't they? It's a little bit like an angel appears in front of Mary. Yeah, she's like, oh, and he goes, don't be afraid. It's like an angel, what are you going to be? Jo oh, you know, I'm just going to peel some spuds. No, it's like an angel appears in front of you and you're kind of like, ah, oh, don't be afraid. Yeah, they do. So we're told. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand there looking into the sky? Now here's a, here's a key thing. This same Jesus... This same Jesus. Why write it like that? Why write this same Jesus? Who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you've seen him go into heaven. Why would you say this same Jesus? Well, no one who's claimed to be Jesus, and this includes the Antichrist that's coming, is going to come from the clouds. Okay? We're waiting for Messiah who's going to come through the clouds. It's a massive Christian doctrine. He's coming on the clouds, kings and kings. And... You probably don't know that song. But it's like, you know, and everyone's like, nope, you've been listening to rubbish music. But um, So through the clouds, that's how Jesus returns. And, um, I find that line so funny, though. Because it's like, the, guy, the guys are there saying, why are you looking in the sky? Jesus will come back that direction. Like, yeah, of course they're looking in the sky, because that's where he's coming back to. <laughs> yeah. I never really 
So we'll come back the same way. You know, people people like it's science fiction. Me and Ellen's talked um, um, a, wh- a while ago about the millennial reign and all the things that happen and the, the saints return, the, the rapture. And it all seems a bit like science fiction. But it, has anyone seen how Hollywood, it might not be Hollywood these days, but the, the film industry is preparing us for things that rise and things that come down from the sky? And, you know, have you ever seen how the, these films are like? Um, beings coming from the sky and it's almost like you know there's going to be a generation watching from heaven and there's going to be a generation on earth who watch things come from the sky because it's not Jesus who does that okay there's the beasts and the angels and all that kind of thing they come from the sky so it's not going to be massively far-fetched but here's the here's the problem I've seen this in a film so I can't take this seriously See, you're being duped all the time into seeing something that's supernatural as being an act of fiction, and that's how you'll receive it. And I think that's something to do with the great deception where they see things happening and it's not really taken very seriously. What film is this promoting? Yeah, but, but who knows? Hey, just, it's just all happening around us, isn't it? So Jesus comes back, on the, back on the, through the clouds. 12, 1, 12. Then they return to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives. So all this is loaded, it's absolutely loaded. Uh, we need to go to Zechariah 14.4. I can do it for you if you don't want to, but always you know, turn there if you, if you want. Zechariah, it's between uh, Zephaniah and Malachi, and I think there's one before that. Yeah. I'll, do it. I'll, I'll say it for you, uh, where are we? Um, I'm trying to... All right then, so 14.4. Um, I'll tell you what, well, let's do 14.1. A day of the Lord is coming when your plunder will be divided among you. I will gather all the nations to Jerusalem to fight against it. The city will be captured, the houses ransacked and the women raped. Half the city will go into exile, but the rest of the city will not be taken from you. People will not be taken from the city. Then the Lord will go out and fight against those nations as he fights against uh, the, in the day of the battle. On that day, his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives east of Jerusalem and then the Mount of Olives will be split into two from east to west, forming a great valley, with half the mountain moving north and half moving south. Um, there's been a, a, a fracture line found under the Mount of Olives, a massive fracture line, earthquake fracture line. So maybe that's something to do with it, I think it is. Um, where was I? Yeah, the Mount of Olives. So Luke's referring to Old Testament prophecy there and the second coming of Jesus. He's coming back. So what have we had here? We've had... Jesus talking to his Apollos, the filling of the Holy Spirit, uh, the baptism with water, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, uh, the res- restoration of the kingdom to, his, to Israel, hinted at. We've had um, the promise of the Father, the Holy Spirit coming, and uh, now uh, we've had him ascending into the sky, the second coming, and the return on the Mount of Olives. So Luke, in this one chapter there, he's, he's, firing, out, he's firing out on purpose with the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, things that we would read and start to put the story together and start to put it together the way we were told to put it together by Jesus and the Olivet Discourse and all that kind of thing. The Mount of Olives is a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James and Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot and Judas son of James and here we might stop it because we've gone over the half an hour mark they all join together constantly in prayer and this is the thing we've been talking about over weeks us being in prayer constantly in prayer along with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and with his brothers and in that sentence it means the whole church comes together to pray together man woman and child we are all, we all matter. If you're the Theophilus, if you're the friend of God, if you're somebody who's come to Jesus, and you're somebody who's really responded to the gospel, um, then you're a friend of God, and this is written to you. And we, as a church, if, you're the, if this is your church, if this is where you want to be, okay, are called to pray together, to constantly pray together. Now, that doesn't mean give up your job. You know, we all start begging on the street, and you know, because this, because well, of this one scripture, this is something in history that the whole, that you know, God brought together to cause something to happen. All right, but we have a responsibility to pray, 
and that's why I think you know current appeals to pray are right and good and true. It's just we're time we're time short, aren't we? You said that, didn't you? We 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 um we we don't have time, and it's a, it's not good to say you don't have time to pray together. But we are going to look to solutions for that to try and find out where we can solve that problem. And um and it is a problem because you know God responds to prayer and it's constantly in prayer. Um, sometimes you'll be praying for something for years, you know. And um, there's in the book of Daniel, there's a story of a demon um, who stops the, the, the angel coming with the answer to prayer. Uh, we, I could, shall we turn to it? Do you want to? <laughs> All right. In the book of Daniel. Now, if you, now you're making me find it. I can't, I'm like, I wasn't prepared for this. I'm not prepared for this. No, I'm really. I think it's nine. Um, gosh. Are you making me work? <laughs> yes, um, let's have a look. Ten thirteen, you say? Oh, there we go. Thanks, Alan. All right, then, so, um, Oh, there's a, there's a big vision going on. Let's just put it that way. Ten, verse 10, 10, 10. A hand touched me and set me trembling on my hands and knees. He said, Daniel, you are highly esteemed. Consider carefully the words I'm about to speak to you and, I, and stand up for I have now been sent to you. And when he said this to me, I stood up trembling. Then he continued, do not be afraid, Daniel, since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding to humble yourself before God. Set your mind to gain understanding and humble yourself before God. Your words were heard, and I have come in response to them. But the prince of per the Persian kingdom resisted me 21 days. Then Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me because I was detained there with the king of Persia. The king of Persia is a demonic force, and the, the angel was detained by him. What's that about? But then Michael, he was like the chief warring angel, comes along and releases it. And Is that the archangel? Pro probably, yeah, kicks his, kicks his butt. You, you're just reading into it now, aren't you? And then, now I have come to explain to you what will happen to your people in the future, for the vision concerns a time yet to come. We are in a war, okay? And there's demons who you can detain angels, you know? And the things that we want and we need to see breakthrough in, I'm not saying it's not happening because that's happening, but I'm saying if God isn't answering a prayer, then there's something that we need to break through in prayer alone, you see? So that's like, we could call prayer meetings and all that to say, hey, let's be good Christians and pray together. Let's do all that. But actually, there's power in this. And when we did Ephesians, we found out that the, the church is the manifest wisdom of God, the proclamation of his kingdom and I've been saying this is probably about the five, fifth time I'm saying it now and trying to get all this out into our hearts and our minds that the, the, the uh, church is not just a religious club I don't think any of us think that in this room but it's actually a power entity that God is working in and through for his kingdom, his kingdom purposes and part of that a key part of it probably the key part of it is prayer alright so um, yeah I've gone past Acts now probably good because it's it is now 39 minutes in, so... Um, yeah, I'll stop it there, because it's a good thing to... Right, any questions? I have a question. Yeah. It's actually a silly question, though. It might not be. It isn't um, any silly question. Well, it's just because it says it was a Sabbath day walk from the city, and I always thought, like, a Sabbath day... Was like a full day, but in the notes here it says like it was about a kilometer, which is they're walking really slow if that's a full day. Yeah. So what what's with that? Is a Sabbath day like a few hours in a day that you don't work or? Yeah. No. You could walk a certain amount of, of um, steps on a Sabbath day. Um, so it's not like a, 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 a you, they walk for the whole day the Sabbath day, but the restricted amount that it was they were allowed to walk. Oh, and that's um, why they actually clarified it's a Sabbath day walk. Yeah, Which about one? ballpark. I don't know So they could only really walk a kilometre on yeah. a Sabbath day. Yeah. It's from at home, wasn't it? 
Yeah, it, it wasn't far from where that where that was. No, I'm just I was curious as to one why they said Sabbath day walk, walk yeah. and then two well then why do it take them all day to walk? Because I can't remember that's just made it. I didn't realise that they were only allowed to walk a certain number of steps on a Sabbath day. Yeah, yeah so I was wondering why it said Sabbath day instead so of just a day's walk. Yeah. Yeah. Like, why say Sabbath? Mm-hmm. But it's just because they're not supposed to walk that much. So that's actually now that they they can actually use it as a metric of length. Yeah. It's about 1.1 1. 1 kilometres or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, interesting. So that's like a school day's walk or something like that. Mm-hmm. Like, so it's one for one, it's like a school walk. But mm-hmm. So, there's a lot in that, isn't there? Sometimes we just read it and it's like, you know, we don't think about why it says some things. But I believe firmly that the Holy Spirit plants things and he loads things in there and if you're willing to kind of look at it and you're willing to kind of examine it and, um, and this is a light pass really you know I haven't gone into any of the Greek or anything or I'm not sure you really have to with historical narrative because it's not trying to teach you theology with theology get into the Greek because there's things in there which you miss if you don't get it um, but yeah historical narrative it, I find it exciting you know it's the it's the thing that's um, one of the things with the book of Acts is that there's a massive tension through the whole thing and it's something that I think it's a current thing now and is this the acts of the apostles or is it the, the acts of the Holy Spirit because don't forget this is Jesus he began to teach and do things in Luke and his continuation of that and the, the reason why he's writing this book is to describe the continuation of Jesus' works through mankind so is it man or is it the Holy Spirit Spirit. well what was Jesus he was the God man wasn't he so there's a mix Mm -hmm. of you have to be you have to lay hands on if that's your thing you have to be there to utter the you know the say it out loud and do you know what I mean you've got to be the hands and feet but it's the Holy Spirit doing the determination of that work so Shall we shall we call it a day there? Mm-hmm. And yeah, there's just a thing that bothers me about um, John where it, uh, where it says, Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? And that seems a bit of a contradiction. Uh, and then it's I don't speak on my own authority. Well, you know, so that's yeah. Yeah. It is. It's, it, there's a mystery about it because we don't live in the whatever many dimensions they do. But what we've got to do is firmly get this going. Is that um, my friend Beresford does this illustration? He said, if this is you in Jesus's hand, okay, you're in Christ, who's in God, okay. Mm-hmm. So it's double protection. You can't get out. So and you don't want to really. But then when Jesus is stood on earth and he's talking to them, and it's unique, he, you know, the people who saw Jesus as a man stood on earth, very unique situation. Um, he was able to give a little bit of, you know, description there in the latter end of John. But, but I suspect that John was written after his, his um, experience with Revelation and what he got there, and therefore that's why you get John's gospel is entirely different than the others, because he's got other things that he's seen that they haven't seen. But that's all worth testing, isn't it? And should we pray? Mm-hmm. Father, we do thank you for this word. Um, untangle my attempt. Make it into something simple to the ears of um, the everyone listening to this. And I just pray, Lord, you'll take this and enthuse us, excite us, ignite us, um, renew us. Um, help us to lay our burdens at your feet, Lord God, the powerful, almighty God of all creation. We give you praise and glory now, Lord. We lift you up. Uh, We know that there's spiritual blessings in Christ, Lord, but you want to work through your people, uh, the friends of God, the the saved, the ones who are um, the ones who are the beloved, the adopted children, Lord. You want to work through them. So give us the grace, the ability to um, uh, come to you lowly and humble and uh, ready to um, hear your words and do your deeds in the name of Jesus. Amen.